Hey guys, Capward here, and today we're going to do a Once Thou Lose episode, so this is the big relaunch of my channel, and uh, I think we'll just get right into it, and then during the breaks, I'll have a lot of time to chat and tell you what I've been up to and all that, so yeah, I think we're about to join a game here. Uh, by the way, this is uh, done in post, because it does require a lot of focus to play, I'm probably around, you know, top 150 or so, in and out of the leaderboard. And uh, I believe this was recorded about three weeks ago. So I don't remember the games too much, but I'll try to lead you through my decision-making process while I play. So Mektos, really good player. Uh, lots to do, a lot of ceiling shots. And uh, he'll be a really difficult opponent <laughs> to start off with. Probably top five in NA. Uh, I believe he just made RLRS. Could be wrong, though. So uh, getting possession of the kickoff really important. I wasn't able to keep possession. I did the wrong kind of flip there. And, uh, just trying to block his air dribble early as he's super dangerous with it. Get a little lucky uh, that I bumped him out of the way and that he hits a little too high. So here I'm just setting up bounce. The bounce is really key in uh, threatening the opponent. And he has to respect my range of hit. And uh, I get the back back off and I get keep possession. Now he's doing the same with me, so I have to back off. He throws it early. I'm trying to save as much boost as I can. This is plenty here. Oh, that's a really good half flip shot. I was not ready for that. I'm just staying on the ball. I don't want to give him possession. Alright, he backs off. That's good. And uh, not sure what's going on there, to be honest. Looks like maybe he wanted to set up a half flip challenge and maybe messed up his flip. Can't tell ya. Alright, win the kickoff. And these, yeah, I got I gotta be better with that. You know, not clinical with my long shots, my kickoff shots yet. And uh definitely gotta get there. Because uh, against guys like these, you gotta be able to sink your shots. And here I see I see him actually uh chip that ball up a little higher than than he wanted. And it meant he couldn't keep possession, so he immediately went up, but I was already up there trying to get a soft block on him and be able to control it and score. Alright, so I, I fully expect, I guess, some uh, sort of play here. No, he takes it on the ground. Okay, get away with that. Shadowing against Mekto is super scary because he'll, he'll do the bump demo quite a bit. And, uh, just some fake challenges in there, trying to get him to throw the ball. And he's got a ceiling shot here, so I was a little concerned, and he uses the block me. So probably I should have let him take it down, catch it, or he'll let it bounce, or whatever whatever he does. And just try to smother it. Because he didn't have the greatest setup. Now he's got possession, this is really scary at this point. And uh, he actually goes past the bongos for the aerial bump. Not surprising at the lead. That's why it's so important for me to try to get possession on the kickoff. It's almost like a for sure goal if he gets possession and gets up. Well, uh, absolute nightmare to play against. He, he's got flip resets. He's got uh, ceiling shots. He's got aerial bumps. You know, he's got air dribbles. It's very scary. Here the ball comes out a little far, and yeah, at that point I'm a little screwed. I have no momentum at that point. I need to be jumping off and taking that ball a little earlier or air dribbling it or something. It's just a, not a great situation for me. All right, bad kickoff, get too under the ball. I went too far, too close to the ball with my first jump. I don't think he has an angle here, so I, get away. I think I get away with that a little bit. All right, I knew he'd take the inside, so I just fake it. Try to create some space for me. Did delay dodge. That's gonna hamper his uh, ability to step out of net. So he, he's rushing out of net. And at that point, I'm able to just take it in with the half foot. Right, I was able to hear him there. I didn't, I didn't have to see him. Right. Trying to get really across the ball here. <laughs> and, uh, I'm actually countering what the pawn does. So I see him move a little left, so I try to move the other way. Now that that's the this is a shot I've been working really hard on. It's not an easy shot. It's the very, very peak flop shot or whatever <laughs> delayed dodge. Uh, and that, that's why one of the reasons why I use this car, right? Flat cars here will do that a lot better than uh, with the Octane. Octane doesn't go anywhere. Oh, 
fine. Just trying to deter any air dribble that you might have. Trying to defend the ground pinch there. All right, it's important I maintain momentum here. It looks like he's got a play, and so I just got early block it. Now I've got no boost, but he looks like he's gonna take it away. Switching the play, so I just want to take away the inside. And, uh, go a little early, and I misread the bounce. And to be honest, that there's no place for that in ones. Yeah, you know, he's already in net facing out. I should just respect that. It wasn't the greatest uh, touch from me. And, uh, no, <laughs> no, no place for pre jumps here. All right, really getting across the ball. It's just it's just the counter. All right, setting up my play. Got a bounce dribble. Let's see what he does. Right, I'm just using him to keep possession. And there. Yeah, that's another shot that I should be sinking. And being able to set you up your own shot is something Fairy Peak's really good at. Uh, it's some, something I'm not... Uh, at this point, you know, three, four weeks ago, I was not uh, good enough at doing. I've actually made a training pack to help me with that. Okay, I know he wants to do a ceiling shot, so I just take it away really early. Uh, actually, really, really early. It doesn't make much sense for me to do it other than the fact that I knew he was going to do it, so it's more like a chess move. Yeah, I just predicted what he was going to do. Okay, this is a little worrying. Got no boost myself. Just going to get 24. Ooh, just graze it. Okay, he looks like he wants to half flip challenge, so just gonna try to get over him. Able to get his boost, but he seems like he's pretty close. You know, he had a good recovery after his hit. Just watching him, watching him, just trying to block all angles. I know he doesn't have a lot of boost, so he's gonna take it up. Okay, this is a little worrying. He uh, he only has a normal air dribble, which is a little easier to uh, to defend against. He doesn't have a half uh, flip reset or anything that forces me to separate from him. And here, I just don't want to create any separation. That's the end of the game. So I'm not gonna lie; like he probably beats me about, up, you know, nine out of ten times. <laughs> He's really, really good. So this is a very rare win for me. He's a fantastic player. I actually just played him the other day, uh, a couple days ago, and he, he smoked me. So absolute nightmare to play against. But anyway, uh, just so in the interim. Probably a lot of you guys have a bunch of questions about, you know, where have you been, Kevper, and how come you stopped making videos, and uh, essentially, uh, life just got a little busy in the last two years, and it just wasn't a priority for me. Um, I was uh, making my own org, my team org, which is Lights Out. Um, we now have multiple teams, multiple coaches, you know, we have three teams. And uh, I, I play competitively as well, as well as trying to coach my team to get up to RLRS. Um, it, it was a big undertaking. And that plus my normal job, uh, where I work 40 hours a week as an accountant, was just, um, making it a little difficult. And the rest of my time I like to spend with my girlfriend, now wife, uh, Shannon. And uh, yeah, we got married in December, so. I mean, life's been good. It's just, didn't have a lot of time to do uh, YouTube. It just wasn't a priority. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> 40,000 subscribers, you know, a lot of fans, a lot of guys I, I, I let down, but ultimately it helped. And I did get a lot of support. You know, I might play unranked or something and everyone's talking about, hey Kev, love your videos, hope you come back. And that's partly the reason why I'm coming back. And the uh, other reason is, I think I want to get serious about Rocket League. You know, like I've been grinding really hard, but to grind this game long term, you need income, and you need to be able to support your lifestyle of trying to play professional. And uh, I realized that a little late, and I just didn't prioritize that. So those are the kind of the main reasons why I'm coming back. And since I'm a much better player now than I was two years ago, I feel like uh, I can actually, you know, give a lot of input, input that's different from someone like Squishy or La you know, who are the top pros are making content right now, helpful content, and uh, you know, be a little more detail driven, which is what I try to differentiate myself with. So that's kind of how that went. Uh, then 
lights out. Uh, we did an RLRS run yesterday in the play-in, so by the time you see this, it's probably been a few days, but we, I think we finished about top 20 or so. You know, we weren't as close as we'd like to be. I was, my goal was top 16, top 12, uh, if possible, and uh, circumstances didn't allow for that. Um, my team actually just disbanded. You know, AJ and uh, Mikey having to deal with their own lives. You know, they have careers and you know, they're finishing up college soon, so those are things you gotta take into account. Right? There's a, some point in this game, playing competitively, you have to give it up and pursue uh, your career. Right? You gotta pay bills. And some of you older folk might know <laughs> know what I mean. If you're still a kid, you know, if you're 15, you're relying on the financial support of your parents and you know, you're trying to pursue competitive, it doesn't last. You need, you need to be able to prove to them that you can build a career out of this, or uh, you build that income for yourself, or you have a side job at the expense of maybe a career in something like computer science at school or accounting, like I did. And uh, right now I'm okay, right? Accounting's fine, you know, I have a six minute commute, super close by, and so I get to come back sometimes on lunch and, and work and play. And, and still get a lot of hours in this game, but th those are things you got to consider. Right? You got to have a really stable life to compete to compete in this game, and more and more people are finding out it's not worth it. Right? Not at the expense of a career or something. So just keep that in mind. That's like a big thing that a lot of people don't think about. Right? Maybe because you're just playing a game for fun, but when you want to make that next step, you got to really live it. You got to prioritize it. It's got to be one of your main priorities in life. So uh, you know, we're disbanding, but I think I'll be okay. You know, I already got uh, some ideas of what I want to do in terms of teaming. Um, so I think that covers about everything that's gone in my life. You know, it's just a lot of work in threes. Uh, been working a lot in ones, actually. I've been trying to keep up with the, the meta and watching a lot of Johnny Boy streams, uh, watching Fairy Peak a lot. And uh, that... that Fairy Peak is the main reason why I use the Samurai. Uh, aside from it being such a really cool looking car, uh, very comfortable, I, I love the width of the car. Uh, it is a breakout hitbox, but I saw Fairy Peak use it <laughs> against um, Scrub Killer about you know, two, three months ago in the Manfield 5K when he was playing at Scrub. I think against Cux he used it as well. And you're just so good with it and I was kind of not feeling the uh, the Batmobile. That was what I was using for about a year. And so I decided to change. It was the car I was looking for for a long time. All right, Henry Rail, um, really good dribbler of the ball. I know, I think he plays from South America. He's like 180 ping, but someone you don't want to give possession. And he, look at me, I've, I've given him possession. So this is a, that's an unstoppable shot. I think he's gonna flick it, and he launches it. <laughs> very, very difficult to defend. Okay. Pretty easy goal there, just a bad kickoff from him. You go up early, I know he can't save it. Ah, he's got possession now, this is a little worrying. Trying to defend this, and that is another unstoppable flick. Like, well played to him. Yeah, I need to be better with my kickoffs to really try to get possession off them. Yeah, this one I flipped too far into the ball, or with my first flip, so I'm a little too close to the ball. Anyway, he misses, so it should be you know, easy to walk in, get a free goal there. But my, my kickoff usually takes a couple games to warm up. It's a lot of detail that goes into it. Yeah, not a good one. Still, again, flipping too close to the ball. Alright, not the greatest, but I was able to get possession off of it. Even though it goes into my corner, you know, it was never in danger of going in or anything. So maybe I can get him to back off here. Or he flips it into me, I'll just take it. You know, it's really important you don't flip and jump at stuff that 
It's gonna disadvantage you. You know, just stay grounded. You don't have to move. Uh, you know, he's able to block that with a half flip challenge. I knew it was coming. That's why I didn't flip. And uh, I was able to get a rebound and bump him other way. A yeah, pretty neutral kickoff. He gets possession though. Just want to kind of deter his dribble. Okay, I'm gonna go for boost. Let's see what he's got. And he took that bounce dribble really straight, and I was able to cover most of the angles that he was setting up. If, if he cut across me a little bit more, it would have been pretty dangerous. He gets that separation. He's got separation here. A little worrying. I'm gonna make sure I don't touch it back into his path. Take it outside the frame of my goal. All right now he's overcommitted. I've stayed grounded. I don't flip right, and I get the goal. Really important to keep your nerve and you're watching the opponent when you're close to your net like that. You want them to challenge you. You don't have to cover that much space. You just got to cover the angles to goal. And he's got to cover the whole field. All right. I get possession. I'm going to flick it early in case he had an early challenge. I'm able to get boost. It will set up my own hit. He's coming across. So like I know he has no boost. And so this is how I create my separation. I just go over him. A little self pass there. And at that point, he has to respect any shot I have, including the hook shot, so he needs to stay away. If he gets too close, I'll just score. So, it's all about, one's all about creating that separation and what you do with the ball then. And that's why kickoffs are so important. You get, sometimes you get separation automatically. And you get a boost advantage, like Henry did there. And he scores. He's deadly. Alright. He's gonna get boost and ball. Uh, it's not that great of a touch or a bounce for him. Just gonna rush it early. Looks like he might be setting up a long shot or something. Nope. Tries to control it. Just gonna take it. Nip right in. Got some good momentum right now. And I, I think he had no boost there, so I'm just gonna put that on net with the arrow shot. Now, really important I get good connection there. These shots are not easy to do. And you need to be clinical in ones. I think uh, most players that are not GC will have trouble connecting with the ball in uh, some uncomfortable situations where you're maybe on the power slide or need to air roll to get the perfect connection and uh, I, I do have a pack for that. It'll be one of my tutorials coming up. Here I get a little too close. Right, you see me bursting away with boost trying to create some more separation and that means that I've already gotten too close. He gets over me and uh, can't get the technique I want for the save. All right, able to get the boost. I think he's gonna challenge really quick, so I just back off. And uh, that's that's got to be a better connection. You know, e even if I can't score on the first touch, setting it up where I maybe hit it to the left a bit, and then getting that next bounce shot, power shot, that would have been ideal. Now he's got possession. You know, really when I should be scoring on open net, you know, I have to be clinical. It's a skill. You got to get really good connections of the ball, perfect connections. Uh, one of the most underrated skills. KDOP is excellent at it. Scrub is excellent at it. But Fairy Peak is just on another level with it. He's so good at striking the ball. And that's, I would say, you know, 50% of your goals are going to come from, you know, long shots and, and just like quality of striking the ball. It's not going to be nice flicks and yeah, that's not what one's always about. Because if you can get over them, like if that was on net, you know, that would have been a goal, or if it was, he was more in position and was close to net, you know, gets them to throw away the ball, they have to respect the shot, and you get to get their boost and pressure them, and you create separation. So long shots are an excellent tool. Now I'm here, I'm just trying to keep possession. I hit that a little too far, I don't want to go up the wall, now he knows what I'm going to do, you can stay close. He goes a little earlier, try to tip it around up, it's not too dangerous. Felt like he might challenge that. He backed off pretty smart. Defending a flick here. Ooh. He, gets, he gets away with that bump. Again, I didn't want to hit it that hard. Uh, now he gets to get a little close. I have to play this a little soft, a little slow. Set up dribble. Try to get over him. All right, but now that's going to affect his recovery. And now I can use the ball coming back to scare him away. Create that separation. Yeah, you know, I think I took that a little too inside to the near post. He's going to punish me for that. that. That needs to be cutting across his net a little bit. 
getting that separation. And then if he dives, I can just block it with a low 50. If he doesn't, then you know I can set up my shot and force him to separate. All right, good 50 that allows me to get back into the game. Okay, his balance is a little too far. Just gonna block it. I'm gonna go early here. As soon as he lifted that ball, it's uh, good for me. Now here, I'm not gonna actually go for a shot. Uh, and I'm able to get the boost. I, I use my wave dash to get there. and He hits it without thinking. You know, like it was a desperate situation. And uh, I'm able to get the gold, and that should be the win. Alrighty. I mean, that guy's a good player. About my level. We trade games quite a bit whenever we play. Yeah, it says he's champ three, but he's a GC. This is early in the season. So yeah, I mean, once is not so much about mechanics. It's the fundamentals of it is reading the opponent, uh, striking the ball, and great first touches and setting up your own shot. You know, how well you can, uh, when you create that separation, how well you can excuse, obviously a big skill. Having a wide range of shots in your arsenal, low 50s, uh, different kinds of flicks, bounce dribbles, bounce dribbles being probably the most powerful, because once you create the separation, you can you can force the opponent to respect that your range of hits so they have to back off and it keeps them you know separated and then you can control them you can pepper them with shots and they have to save them and they lose boost and you make it easier and easier for yourself to score that's all ones is creating that separation oh good kickoff too you need that <laughs> absolutely need that You don't need fancy mechanics. Like, never see me do ceiling shots or anything. In fact, ceiling shots with a flat car are super difficult, I found. Way easier with the octane. Because octane, you don't have to jump off the wall to, to get a lot of these uh, balls to the ceiling. And, uh, you know, aerials require a little more precision with your air roll and all that. So far in those two games, I haven't controlled them at all, really. And I created some separation at points. There's these uh, either good kickoffs or mistakes to the opponent that I've been scoring. So I'm going to try to look to control the game a little more. All right, able to counter the, the opponent. Saw him coming really diagonal, so I was able to flip the other way. And just go straight in. <laughs> Again, countering the opponent and going through the ball. Don't get out. Well, I mean, that's an unstoppable shot. You know, Henry is doing that to me last last game. I, I get to do it here. Oh, and that touch I did where I did that front flip, and then I'm able to get the ball at speed and just able to cut in, is what got me the goal. You know, that's a really important skill, being able to control the ball and then immediately get your boost and shoot. It's just the efficiency of your movement. Fairy Peak is a god at that. That's actually where I picked it up. Alright, I just don't want to jump here. Don't want to dive in. He's missed the boost. Okay, he's going to back off. Alright, I'm going to cut across here. We set up a shot here. Okay, he's pretty close. Ah, uh, you know, I should probably dive at that. Now I'm in a bad spot. And he's got me, and I can't, can't make the save. That's a really good connection. Really good shot from him. That's a perfect connection there. Again, a little too close, a little too passive there. Put myself in a bad spot. Okay, not the greatest kickoff, but I'll be able to get boost. 
I'm gonna go in behind him. I don't wanna get in front of him because uh he'll demo me. So I'm just watching him here. I just hear him. Okay. Oh, I'm dead. Okay. A little too straight with his attack. Really easy to read. I have good momentum. Not frozen or anything. He hasn't done anything. Okay, just hitting the brakes there. Because I know he's coming for the demo. And I, I take it across my net a little bit and he, he gets baited in. And he's ex fully expecting me to, to to hit it out to him after challenging me. So hitting the brakes is a really good way of um, preventing demos. You know, and Don't get sucked to the boost if you can't get it. That's another way. If you go to the boost all the time, it's another way you get completely uh, dominated and demoed. When it, okay, so he's facing the other way in the net. So at that point, just throw the ball at him and he'll hit it away to you. You can control him. Alright, separation here. Ooh, not the greatest touch there. Alright, he's right on me. Okay. I can use this. I don't have to take this in yet. You can lure him out. Go right around him. Whoop. I know he doesn't have a lot of control in that situation because he... He had so much separation, he has to boost the full speed supersonic to get to me. That's gonna ruin his ability to adjust to my touch and back off, and so I just tip it around him. Yeah, he got stretched out of a net there. Okay, kick off goal. So this game, yeah, definitely control. You know, it starts with the kickoff. You know, using that separation to create an advantage, grinding down his boost, and then uh, just controlling the game from there. I gotta back off here. Another very straight attack. So I just go early. I don't always do that. Sometimes I do it. Just depends on what I think the opponent's gonna do. Alright. So ball's off the wall. We saw that with Mech you know when I was playing Mechtos. It means he has to back off. So I'm able to get the ball. Low fifty going through the ball. Challenging the net a little bit, and he's gonna have to play that. I know he's got no boost. So at this point he's gotta back off. I'm not gonna take it in early. Right? I want to get as much separation as possible. He's losing 5-1. He's going to have to come to me. All right. As soon as he comes, all right, let's take it around on the score. All right. Stretching the opponent. Controlling the game. Good players will do that to you all the time. You know, they'll, they'll be in the lead <laughs> early on. They'll control you and just... They keep you honest. And that's what I, what I did there. So I think at this point, I was, uh, I think I was just inside top 100. I'm not in top 100 anymore, uh, because you win some, you lose some, obviously. I've been playing quite a bit, been working on my long shots, my kickoff redirects, my execution of plays when I get separation. It's been a lot of fun, but I've been stuck in that, about that 1300 MMR range. Uh, and one thing I've actually been doing after this, you know, in future sessions, uh, on Bacchus Mod, which is like, like a PC plugin, it's like a third party software, um, you can actually anonymize the opponent's names. So I find that pretty useful because sometimes you go into games with a preconceived notion of how a player's gonna play, like, for example, Mechtil's taking the ball off the wall. Or you might play a little scared because you, you know, you're playing against Kronovi or something. Uh, and that's kind of just ridiculous. I mean, players are just nameplates. So sometimes I like to go in and just assess an opponent on their own ability uh, by anonymizing the names, giving them a bot name. Uh, Jbot, another player you'll see on Johnny Boy streams, I think. Pretty good player, very mechanical. Uh, not as good as Mectos, but very good player. Super good with uh, keeping possession. All right, crazy separation. He does challenge though, so I get the block, but uh, he's able to get a really good block. Okay, I just go early here. That ball bounced really high, so I know that he can't do much, and you'd have to back off. He's right under it, so I go up early. I thought he'd back off, to be honest. I didn't think he challenged that. Uh, maybe he went for a bump attempt or something. Uh, it will walk it in. Okay, that's a good looking kickoff. Pretty solid. He's going to get a boost, so I don't want to be in front of him. I'm going to take the ball. I just don't want to get demoed there. 
play dodge there. Alright, he's staying pretty close. All right, I knew he was going to do a half flip challenge, so I stay really close. I give, give him a little bit of separation so I don't get outplayed there. Alright, so the one thing I shouldn't have done there is dive in and flip because he's in complete control of the situation. And that's what I did, right? He doesn't. Ha he has all of his angles blocked. There's no risk for him. So all the risk is on me, and I, I still dived in. So I need to back off there. And he did a really good job controlling that ball and uh, doing a little 50. So that, that's that got to be on net. Because it's not on net, it doesn't keep on us. You don't have to jump or anything. Um, so that's a little weird. All right. So he, he goes off the ceiling. That's smart from him because I was going to do the long shot there. If, had he not done that, probably scored. All right, had the separation, trying to just probe and test him. Can't get the boost, yep, that's good. Now right, he has 12 boost, probably put that on net. Yeah, not a good connection, needs to be higher. You know, it, that's what it comes down to, getting that perfect connection. Got a little bounce dribble. He, I thought I was in control of that situation. It was just a really bad executed 50. I think I dodged the wrong way or something. Do did the wrong dodge, I need to plank my car a little to the side and then hit it with the top of my car. Um, I just absorb that 50. Because he's coming out to me on a balance dribble. I'm in control of the situation. Uh, sh I should be punishing him there. I right, didn't cut across the ball there. I'm kick off. He's going to get possession. I'm going to save as much boost as I can. I've got eight. Maybe play one pad. Two pads. Yeah. I cover the angle for shot and he goes, he goes for the pass. So maybe... If I prioritize my position a little bit, rather than getting two pads, maybe just one pad, it would have been okay. I could uh, sense that was going to be a bad situation for me. Oh, he's backed off. Oh, he's giving me a little bit of separation. Which I can use to leverage into the shot. Not a great connection either. Alright, fake challenge gets him to back off. He doesn't have an angle for shot. Alright, don't want to go past the post here. Right, he's going for the demo play. Right. Number one mistake most players make in that situation is they step out and then the ball gets played behind them, then they have nothing they can do. Alright, it's just the goal. Alright, staying really close. No separation for JBot. Okay. Again, I stay grounded there. Alright, so that's why I can ignore the ball. I can go for boost. Let's see what he's going to do. Got to find him. Alright, he's going to take the ball. Okay. Not going to half flip there. He's, that's what he's waiting for. So I was watching him. Not going to give him what he wants. All right, he's keeping possession here. And yeah, that just kills time. It is a little frustrating when you lose, but it's such an important part of ones. He does a good job of it. Okay, getting some bumps. He gets the save, and he keeps possession right now. He's perfect touch to set up his next play. All right, not, not the best flick. All right, ignore the boost there. Ah, uh, you know, that that's another chance for a shot. I, if I was totally clinical, I would have scored that. Um, okay, I mean, I'll take that. <laughs> Not sure what he's doing. Uh, maybe he felt like uh, I was there or something, or I was going to challenge. I have no idea. It's total brain fart from me, but I'll take that. But yeah, long shot's something I've been I've spent hours and hours on. I have a great training pack for that uh, that I'll be releasing in the coming weeks. I think you guys will enjoy it. It's uh, not completely done yet. Uh, so trying to go up early. He completely fakes me. That's part of his quality. Yeah, if you give possession off the kickoff, <laughs> they get to take it up the wall with 100 boost. It's, it's GG. This guy can set up re a lot of players who set up flip resets as well off the air dribble. So you gotta, you gotta be worried about it. I right, should be scoring that. I'm gonna try to lure him out a little bit. Okay, hit the near post, kind of scares him, you whiffs, and goal. Attacking the near post there is a, it's a good strategy. And it's really awkward, it's outside of his range of hit. He's expecting more of a save. Okay, I don't want him to be able to set up a shot. Alright, so I kind of deterred him, and he had a bad touch, so I... I was able to save the shot in that. Alright, just trying to get boost here. Get box him out a little bit. Okay, sweet. Just take my dime. Use the separation. And uh, 
you know, this is kind of a Hail Mary pinch <laughs> temp that I went for, and uh, it worked out for me. You know, he's been controlling me all game, so I need to try to do something, grin advantage, and uh, pinches out perfectly. Was uh, surprised at how good it was. Alright, ceiling shot off the kickoff. You know, with the air dribble. Damn. <laughs> That's all you can say. Alright, if you don't get possession on the kickoff, what can you do? These guys will kill you. Absolutely, they will kill you. Top level ones is uh, super interesting because of that. Alright, I've got separation. Seems like he's getting really close. So I'm gonna just hit it behind him. Alright, that means he's gonna struggle a little bit. Landing and I just take the, the next shot. Get a really clean power hit. It will just uh, drop that into the net. Yeah, that's perfect connection there. He's really happy with that. Getting that shot with the arrow shot. Now he's backed off. I'm watching him, so it's not a, not a concern. Okay, I know I can just get the boost here. I know he doesn't have much. And probably I, I could have challenged that a lot earlier. Mine was kind of preoccupied on getting the boost there. And, uh, that should be overtime. And that's a terrible kickoff, and that's a GG. <laughs> so uh, that ends the series. A little disappointing. It felt like that was winnable. But that's sometimes how it goes. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, glad to be back. And uh, you know, if you're new, welcome. If you're an uh, old fan, welcome back. Peace out, guys.